Hello and welcome to the eFramework Developers Tutorial Part 2. My name is James Wilson and I'm a member of the Iterative Reductionist team. This is Part 2 in a series of screencasts we've put together to provide both a developer's tutorial for building EE-based web applications as well as an architectural analysis of the framework itself. In this tutorial, we're going to be walking you through setting up a development environment on a Windows machine. And there are lots of different ways to set up a development environment and this will be just one. As developers, we know that most often getting the tools set up and configured correctly is a painstaking task and frankly we'd rather be writing code. So we hope that this tutorial will help you get through the setup process quickly so you can start delving into coding with the EE framework, which we'll cover in the next set of tutorials. Alright, there are a number of tools we're going to need to set up and we're going to walk you through setting up and configuring each of them. The first thing that we'll need is a web server stack. And there are a number of things we need to be looking for in our web server. First, we'll be developing on Windows and Mac machines, and our host will be a Linux box. Thus, we'd prefer to have a cross-platform solution. And if you haven't already figured it out, you use a PHP framework. So we'd like our web stack to run an Apache HTTP server. Now, PHP and MySQL pretty much go hand in hand, so we're going to want to use a MySQL data backend. Also, the YeeDAO code generation tools work great with MySQL. As for the development language, it pretty much goes unsaid that we're going to use PHP. Now, given all this, we've determined XAMPP to be an excellent choice for our web server stack, and we're going to go with that in this tutorial. XAMPP, by the way, stands for Cross-Platform, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. We're also going to need to install the Java Development Kit and then an Integrated Development Environment, or an IDE. We've decided to go with Eclipse. When this is done, we'll be setting up a web host in the cloud so that we can share our web applications with the world. We've decided to go with Cloud Control because they offer a free option. Obviously, the free option isn't the least bit scalable, but for now it works well for the purposes of this tutorial. Now we're not actually going to be deploying any applications until the next tutorial, but we will be covering setting up this web host in this tutorial so that we can get it established as a source control repository. Speaking of which, every good developer should be using some form of source control. We're going to go with Bazaar because it's free and works well with Eclipse. Then we'll be showing you how to get the Bazaar plugin for Eclipse set up and configured. And last but not least, we'll get the E framework installed and set up on the development machine. Now this may sound like a lot of stuff, but it's just a one-time process, so just stick with us. Let's start with the JDK installation. Open up a web browser and navigate to www.oracle.com. And then on the front page, over to the right, you'll see a top download section. There, click on Java for Developers. Right. Find the download JDK button and make sure you don't accidentally get the development kit bundle. Um, it's a loaded package with a lot of stuff that we don't need for this tutorial. Click on the download JDK button. That'll take you to a page where you need to accept a license agreement that you will no doubt never read. And then find the executable that uh, is right for your machine. In this case, I'm going to be grabbing the Windows X64 version. Now, this will take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And when the download finishes, navigate to the folder where you downloaded it to. Alright, for this tutorial we're just going to go with the default options. And this is a fairly long install, so sit back and relax. And I'll f fast forward this video. We're just going to skip the registration process. And we're done with that. Once the Java Development Kit is installed, we can move on to the second step installing and setting up XAMPP. This will provide us a web server stack on which we can host our Yee web applications from our development machine. As I mentioned previously, XAMPP is an acronym for cross-platform, Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. 
So to install XAMPP, you can bring up a web browser, navigate to www.apachefriends.org, look for the link at the top for XAMPP, and then here you're going to choose your appropriate platform. This tutorial, we're going to be using Windows, and then choose the uh, download link. And as of the time of this recording, uh, version 1.7.4 is the most recent. And you can choose whichever uh, installer option you'd like. If you'd like to follow along with us, we're going to choose the installer package. All right. Now this download will take some time, so feel free to go take a nap, read a book, or watch a hockey game. For now, I'll fast forward the video a bit. Okay, now when that's done, Go ahead and uh, bring up the file wherever you saved it and launch it. And when the installer starts up, uh, you want to make sure you set the uh, destination folder to the C drive slash SAMP. And I'm just going to go with the default options. Feel free to change them if you'd like. Alright, now we're done with the installation. Uh, there's still a little bit more we need to do to get this configured properly though. Go ahead and say yes to start up the XAMPP control panel. So the first thing you want to do here is just make sure that everything, all the services are turned off for now. We'll start them in a moment, but we need to set some other stuff first. We'd like to modify the path variable to include the C backslash SAMP backslash PHP folder so that we can run commands from that folder without having to type the full path each time. So we'll walk you through how to do that here on a Windows machine. Now this particular machine happens to be a Windows 7 machine. So what we want to do is we want to go to the control panel. We want to go to the system and security and then system. Then you're going to want to go to advanced system settings and here you'll find the button to take you to the environment variables. Look for the path variable and go ahead and edit that. What we want to do is add a uh, path to our XAMPP slash PHP folder. Now if you do what we did, installed it to the C drive, you're just going to type in, make sure you get the semicolon, C colon backslash XAMPP PHP. Now if you decided to install it elsewhere, you're going to want to put the, uh, the full path to the XAMPP slash PHP folder there. Alright, then go ahead and uh, choose OK and close those windows out. And now we'll move on to the next step. Now we're not quite done setting up XAMPP, uh, but due to YouTube si video size limitations, we need to cut the video off here. And we'll continue from where we left off in the next video, eDevelopers Tutorial Part 2-2. We'll have a link to it in the download section.